Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Martin with The Contoured Chemist. It's that time of the year. It is summer sale time with Saint. It is officially summer and there's going to be a lot of items, 40% off. So I'm gonna go through all of them with you so you know what is coming. I'm even gonna attempt to do my face with only things on sale, as much as possible at least. If you wanna check it out, please keep watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and thanks for being here. Okay friends, let's get right on into it. We're going to do rapid fire going through as many of these sale items as possible. Um, I am gonna go through and swatch all of the lip and cheeks because there's a bunch of limited edition shades that are coming back and also all of the eyeshadows. We're gonna swatch all those, at least quickly, but I wanna go through even the non-makeup things that will be on sale so you guys are aware. Now, my caveat. Some of these items might be gone quickly, okay? So the sale starts technically Sunday night because the sale starts Monday, June 10th, midnight, okay? So midnight, <laughs> Sunday. Five days all the way through June 15th at midnight, okay? So it's all while supplies last. Some of these items could possibly even sell out before the sale starts, but just a heads up, as of right now, I'm gonna go over everything that is going to be 40% off so that you guys know what to put on your list. First off, skincare. So the only skincare item that is on sale is the mask, the exfoliating mask, which I am currently out of. But if you haven't tried it, you pretty much just put it on your face. It's kind of like our cream, but it does have um, exfoliating enzymes and so, what it does is you just put it on for like, I only use it for like about five minutes and then you just wipe it off. It's a great weekly treatment. Normal microfiber cloths are on sale as well as the rounds. So depending on if you're in US and Canada, there are different stocks for both, unfortunately. And as always, if you're on my newsletter, you got all the information in an email. These are my favorite for in the mornings if I don't like use an actual cleanser in the morning, I sometimes just use water, sometimes micellar water, and I use it on this and just kind of wipe it off my face, like to prep my skin before my skincare in the mornings. And I love these because they're reusable. And they also have like a really gentle, soft side, as well as a more exfoliating side. And so you can kind of use whatever side you need for the day. There are a couple of different collections they call it and one of them i grabbed a couple <laughs> is the travel bottle i love these in fact it's got like a pumper a spray bottle um and a couple of little like round pots that i mean i have like hair pomade in one and eye cream in the other and the spray i have one of my favorite mists and the pump one of my serums but i use them for skincare um you can also use them for hair products but these cute little bottles. It's a great little collection. And then also the holiday fragrance collection, the ones with the black caps, which are, I believe, all of the solid perfumes in the spray version. Okay, so if you like to spray on your perfumes instead of using the solid perfumes, the entire collection's on sale. And they also make really great room sprays if you haven't tried them for that. Or would make a great gift idea, like, tuck it away for later, right? When you need something, um, any woman would love that collection. Speaking of fragrances, all of these one through six are also on sale individually. And then the solid perfume, if you don't know, are all the rose gold illuminator and they double as both an illuminator and also a solid perfume. So we got Saint number one, four, five, six, and seven are all on sale. So if you've been wanting to try one of our perfumes, it's a great time to start. There are a bunch of compacts on sale. 
Um, so some are only Canada, some are only US. I'll show you a couple of my favorites. Um, the Tencel palette in the 27, which is triple layers, which is my favorite size, especially if you're growing your collection. This one doesn't like online, it just doesn't do it justice because it's so beautiful. It's almost like a feather metallic pattern and it's one of my favorites. So that one's on sale. Quite a few Demi ones. The Mood palette has always been one of my favorite. I love the design, all of the different pictures. I think they're so cute. Demi palettes in both the Mood and the Solid Black. Triple 27 in tinsel, white, the yellow, the orange, and then, then the just embossed silver. Gosh, there's a lot. Uh, this one will most definitely probably go fast. So many people wanted this roses red pro palette. So it's a double. This is what I keep all of my lip and cheeks in. I had to take out a bunch for what's on sale, but I'm obsessed with this red one. Glossy, so good. Below seven, which was now uh, the 18. So the double decker in this like, you see the like shimmer. It's so hard to see. It's a very fine shutter shimmer, not like a glitter but that kind of like metallic black, that color in the 18. So I put all of the sale shades in this one. This is the artist. A bunch of great palette options as well. Oh, brushes. Yes, it might be a little hard for me to, I'm gonna do my makeup without, my two favorite brushes, well, two of my three favorite brushes are not on sale, but some of my ones I use every single day, never go without, all of the like great eye brushes, they're all 40% off. If you are in Canada, you can get the detail, the 3D brush, the blush and bronzer, and the shape brush, which are probably all my favorite. If I was gonna actually do my face, those were the brushes I would do. If you're in the US, all of these brushes are on sale in rose gold. Whoops, I forgot one. All of these brushes. <laughs> then there's some, oh my gosh, just kidding. Sometimes the silver and rose gold are like so close to each other, it's hard to tell. These in rose gold in the US, these Demi brushes in silver, as well as the spoolie that is for traveling, which I love this bad boy, that one right there. So quick rapid fire, what are my favorite brushes for each? Let's go with Demi first, because they're nice and short. Okay, so the wash brush, I'll be honest, is so similar to the blend brush that is in the 3D line, okay? They both have like really flexible um, large ends. This one's got, the blend has a little bit more bristles. The small ends are the biggest difference. This one is a lot more flexible and this one is a lot more dense on the blend, okay? But I do believe if you have one, you might not need the other. Um, my choice of the two would definitely be the blend. I use this denser end all the time. If you've seen my videos, you know what I'm talking now, about. If you are a Demi user, I believe all Demi people <laughs> should have these three um, because they're just so good. The spot is used for everything, as you know, any small points. If you have blemishes like this guy, that's what I'm gonna be using on that guy today. So the spot brush is a must have. Like I don't recommend doing Demi without the spot and the bright if you're doing your under eyes. This brush is literally everything. Now the blur brush, if I was nose contouring with Demi, this is what I would use. Uh, this one is though very similar to or eyeshadow brush, okay? You can tell. Those ends are pretty identical. The other ends, this is the eyeshadow, this is the blur, and I do feel like this blur end is like in between the smudge and the small end of the eyeshadow. You see how it's kind of like right in between the two? I love this for eyeshadow. So if you're looking for maybe something a little bigger than this end. Maybe you've tried the smudge end for your outer corner and it's too large for your eyes. I would recommend the blur. This one is really good because it's right in the middle so you can kind of almost use it for what I use both of these for, Rich. I use this end to halo 
this in for outer corner. So that blur brush, it's like the sweet spot. It's one of my favorites. And this end, again, is a great blending end. So I'll be honest, I use this more for eyeshadow than for Demi, but um, it's a really great versatile so, brush. I think I've talked about these plenty. I mean, the eyeshadow brush is my holy grail. Can't do my eyes without it. I recommend it for everyone that's starting with eyeshadow. Um, it's the only thing I will ever use in my crease is this end, or like I said, that other end of that Demi brush. Um, smudge brush is the only thing I use my outer corner for. Like this is a game changer. And I like to use this one for blending or packing on color on the lid. Again, if I'm doing a dramatic eye, I will always use this brush. The line brush is the only thing I'll ever use for my brows. And I also use it for liner. The spoolie end is great for blending out. Um, again, I can't do my brows without this brush. So I'm glad it is included because I was like, oh, how am I going to do my brows? Uh, the multitasker, I still, I will always say, it's one of the most underrated brushes we have. I, I use two, sometimes three, to be honest. If I have blemishes, this was always like my go-to for blemishes. It is just that great small size. Um, but I've used it for liner. I use both ends for liner. I use both ends for my full face. I like to use this to like press on powder after I do blemishes. I will use this end to line my lips or to fill in with lip color. I've used this side to line my lips. I mean, it is a multitasker because it will do everything. So eyes, lips, and small detail work like blemishes or even dark spots. If you have certain spots you want to get better coverage on, I mean, everyone needs at least one in their collection. I'm just so lazy. I don't want to like wash my brush in between. So I use three. I know. Stock up. You've 40% off is like such a bar. Okay. So besides the blend brush, and I didn't really like say much about this. You guys have seen me use it time and time again. It is my brush pick for those that want very natural finish. So, um, I even use this side for like picking up the least amount of product ever. This one such a game. I, I love this brush. If I want my skin to show through, this is what I grab. Other two face brushes. Now you guys see me use this every day. I'll be honest, I never use this end. It doesn't mean I can't. Um, I'm going to use it today, but this end is my holy grail powder brush. It's designed for powder. I love that I can just touch the powder. It picks up the perfect amount. I can just tap it on. I never have cakiness because I'm using the right amount of powder every time for my under eyes. Um, and it just kind of like blocks oil by like being able to press that setting powder into the skin. I'm obsessed with this. I'd never used this kind of brush before. Um, and now I'm like such a convert. Like you'll never see me use a loose brush to powder ever. I feel like it does nothing. Like this is where it's at. So if you get oily during the day, try, even if it's a loose powder, try pressing it into the skin with a brush like this. It is such a game changer. The other end is more of a kabuki style, but you can use this in so many different ways. You can use this as your color corrector. You can use it for blush. Um, it's a really great end that can press on product, but isn't too dense. And when I say too dense, I mean, the last brush, which is the buff brush. This brush is very dense. Therefore, it's going to pick up more product when you tap into the creams and it's better for full coverage. It is by far the brush I recommend for a full coverage application of 3D. So if you want full coverage, use the large end, the small end I used to use all the time for my under eyes when I wanted more coverage under the eyes. So both of these, best for full coverage. You only want to kind of press it on and not try to buff like the name suggests. This brush does not buff well. It's a bad name in my opinion. It's a cute name, but bad for application. Yes. So I'm going to get to those a little bit later. I'm going to show you how I would do my full face with just these brushes. Um, a couple of things as well that's on sale. Oh, I'd stock up on this bad boy. I have one of these in every single palette I own, and that's the brush cleaning tile. Y'all know, I i mean, I use it without even thinking or of showing it in between every time I'm switching 
eyeshadow colors. Do you get muddy eyeshadows if your eyeshadows are always blending together um, and looking like all one color? Sometimes it's just because you're not getting the residual color off of your brush before dipping into the next one. It was a game changer for me, for sure. You can just wash it with a little soap and water, but I still like to have one in every single one of my palettes. And if you're a Demi user, it's also key for getting that residual color in between changing colors. If you're doing like your under eyes and need multiple shades like most people do, then use that in between as well. Last but not least, the case for the Shine Paper. So if you have just been using the little paper, which there's nothing wrong with using just this, the case just kind of elevates it, I feel like and keeps it safe in your purse from getting all bent up and whatnot. But the Shine Paper, if you haven't tried it, this is the perfect time of year. It is a game changer if you have oily skin. If you also feel like you use your Perfector, but maybe it's not fully taking off all the excess, I'd recommend the Shine Paper. Like it is amazing. Like if I'm traveling and don't have my Perfector or can't prep it properly, I will grab a shine paper and I will just kind of do it under my eyes and in my t-zone I'm always shocked at the difference it makes like I can get away with not using my perfecter if I have some of this and I don't have oily skin but for my oily skin peeps this is what I would recommend using like midway through the day shine paper and then you can just press on a little bit of vanilla dust to kind of keep that shine at bay those two perfect combination for touching up. That was almost everything except for the actual shades. <laughs> and I wanted to show you guys all of them as quickly as possible. Oh, this is going to be so hard for me to like not talk about all of these because you guys, some of my favorite colors that I had to get out of my daily compact are in this. So I'm not sure how long each one's going to last. They didn't tell us anything about what the stock is like. But let's see, everything from here to here is available in both the US and Canada. These three are only US and these four are only Canada. So let's go through and I'm going to just do quick swatches. First up, Hopelessly Devoted right there. Now I will show you the graphic of what these look like. They look literally like, put up the graphic next to the, they look completely different in the online pictures. And I feel like that is why some of these are on sale. And I had someone ask like, does this mean these things are being discontinued? No, it does not. Cause there's some highlights on sale. I just think it's more like they have extra stock. I think it's an excess stock thing, but they didn't tell us that. I'm just guessing based on what I know about the company over the past seven years, right? So Hopelessly Devoted is a very, sheer like not a whole lot of pigment pale pink almost like a cool undertoned um illuminator but a glossy lip and cheek if you're fair it has a little bit of pink hue um on me it is more like an illuminator or a topper shade it will cool down any shade and kind of just add that glow because there is shimmer in it okay next up scares people this is pineapple one of the fruit punch collection it does smell like pineapple i am obsessed with these but not everyone is so personal preference now this one might look yellow when swatched i used to wear this all the time not by itself but like kind of mixed with colors i love the scent of all of these because they're not overpowering but they're just like fun and fruity. I think they smell so good. They're all glossy. They're all a little sheer, so you don't need much of them. But like you guys know me, I like my warm shades. If I'm wearing a cool tone and it looks off and I need to warm it up slightly, pineapple would be a great topper shade to just add a touch of warmth. Like not to be scared, because I know some people are scared of like these bright orangey shades. This would be your your girl to just kind of warm up a shade or to warm up your face slightly add a little bit of that dewy glow so good now the next one is 
one of my favorite shades of all time, also fruit punch, tangerine. Okay, so people are scared because it looks orange, but I'm telling you guys, if you just put like a light wash, again, this shade can just warm up a shade. I love it because you need very little and you can just kind of get a little bit of that, you know, that summer glow to your cheeks and it has, oh, they all smell so good. They, uh, the Fruit Punch collection is such a favorite. These two, I feel like were the, the most scary to people uh, for whatever reason, but Tangerine was honestly my most worn of all of the shades. I, it was the one I felt like when I put it on, I was like, wow, I didn't think I'd like that, but I love it. So again, depends on your personal preference. If you like warm shades, it's a must have in my opinion. Some of the next ones are very similar. All right, so this one is Wild Flower. This one was um, a matte pink. It is a cool pink, kind of a light to mid-tone matte pink. The next one is one step darker in my opinion. This was Tiny Dancer, again, matte. I say darker I meant light did I say darker or lighter I meant lighter if I did <laughs> one step lighter um, tiny dancer okay again perfect for lighter skin tones if you're darker like me you can use a little bit to kind of cool down a shade but um, if you try to use it alone these next couple shades like tiny dancer and the next one are probably gonna wash you out or look chalky. So you gotta be careful. This one is one lighter. So next to all three, if you can kind of see, uh, Wildflower, Tiny Dancer, Cotton Candy, okay? They're all like light pink, cool tones, okay? This one always reminded me of like a demi shade because it was so light. Um, I always used it to kind of more like highlight on the top of my cheekbones because it was too light for me. Again, it's a favorite for those of you who have fair skin tones. Um, you can totally pull it off. If you like cool, cool tones, those are great cool pinks because we don't have a whole lot of cool pinks otherwise. This one I'm shocked is on sale because it's one of my all time favorite lip and cheeks we've ever had. This is Tango. She's glossy. I think she's considered glossy, not semi-gloss, but she's like a pigmented gloss. Like, do you see that? I just went, I just kind of tapped in. She's pigmented. So I like pigmented glosses. I mean, I like the kind of sheer ones too, because I can layer, but the pigmented glosses are great for those of you that maybe want the look of a gloss, don't like it to feel like you don't want to be able to feel it on your skin, meaning like you'd be like, oh, it's kind of sticky or tacky. Sometimes that's because you're trying to wear too much of a sheer gloss. And if you're building up color, trying to get the color payoff, you are layering like too much product, right? Something like this, like our more pigmented glosses, you can use so very little of it, you're not gonna get that sticky tacky feeling, um, but you're gonna get color, because it's like a good, a good amount of color with very little. So, this one I always considered like a pink with a little bit of warmth in it. I feel like it's just such a good medium pink that it works on a really wide range of skin tones. Um, I love the glow. I don't think there was shimmer in this one. No, there wasn't, but it's just such a pretty color. If you like a warm pink, Tango is one of my favorites. Another one I'm shocked is on sale because when they finally brought this back permanently, it sold like crazy. It is one of my favorites and it's one of the very few semi-glosses we have. This one is one of my fave nude shades. So this is a Biza and it is a semi-gloss so it's a little bit less sticky. It's a little bit more solid if that makes sense when you go into it. Um, it is more of like a cool nude in my opinion. Um, but it's just like a beautiful, like not too dark, not too light. It's a little bit cooler than Sadie if you have that. Um, it 
it's a really beautiful color as well. If you're looking for a neutral, that would be my pick. Oh, the next one. I know not everyone likes what I like, but I, this was one shade I, I distinctly remember. I was like, I'm not gonna like that. Like, no. And then it became one of my favorite shades. I even tried to make some stuff with it. Uh, this is one you cannot see very clear, it, clearly in the 10. Let's see if I can capture it. It has very fine glowiness to it. A little bit of, uh, there, there it goes, maybe. A little bit of glowy undertone shimmer got like shimmer in it. I know it looks very scary. It looks like my shirt. The reason why I love this is because I can barely tap in, use very little product and just get a little bit of warmth. And in the summer when I want like just a little bit more color, but I don't want a bright, bold blush because I like to wear my cheeks a little bit more subdued. It's so pretty. Now, obviously you can build it up and get darker, but like, I just, if you have darker, the darker your skin tone, the more pigmented you can wear it, in my opinion. But this is Jolene. Did I say that? I don't think I did. Absolutely one of my favorite. If you like Tiger Lily, which is currently in my palette because it's such a favorite, it's kind of like Tiger Lily. It has less pink in it. Um, more, a little bit warmer undertone. This one out of my palette as well. Uh, the next one's Tropicana, another semi-gloss. My gosh, if you like peachy, if you like corally, like this is a holy grail color for me because it's got, it's the only, the only dewy peachy tone we really have at this depth. We have some lighter ones, but Tropicana just gives such a gorgeous glow. So if I'm wanting like an all corally look, I would use this and put a little bit of this over it just for glow. And it's such a beautiful summer shade. I know some people don't like those tones, but I'm telling you, try it. I was scared of them for the longest time. So I was like, I'm a pink girl, I'm a pink girl. No, actually it turns out I'm not. Um, I actually prefer these over pinks now, even though I love pink. Pink has always been my favorite color. So sometimes you don't know until you try things and get a little out of your comfort zone in my opinion. At least that's how I learned what really looks good on me. <laughs> this is definitely what I would consider a fall tone. This is ro rosewood. Um, if you like sandstone, this is a little bit more terracotta definitely a matte and you don't need much of it. It is a beautiful, just kind of, again, warm, like burnt sienna type color. Um, so yeah, if you wanted that one for last fall, now you can get it 40% off. Okay, so both of those are available US and Canada. Now let's go just US. First one is Taffy. This one was such a favorite when it first came out. Um, I loved this color. It is a little bit light. Um, if you compare it, it's probably in between these two, but it has a little bit more warmth than these tones do, in my opinion. Just a little bit, just enough to where it was more wearable for a skin tone like me that has warm undertones. And then the next one is Audrey, and Audrey is in between, in my opinion, these two. Another cool pink, so this is just the US, okay? And it's matte as well. The other Fruit Punch Collection shade that scared people and is coming back just for US is Grape. This one was new last year. Again, it scared people, but this one has the opposite effect as those yellow and orange. This one cool down any shade. So if you grabbed a shade like Tropicana and you're like, eh, it's still too orangey, too warm on me, you could just mix in a little bit of this, top this over it, and it will adjust it and make it cooler. It really isn't as pigmented as it looks in the 10. I know it looks scary because it looks straight purple, but 
it really just adds a cool tone to anything and it is glossy so you can top and get a little bit of glow as well of course canada gets some of the best shades coming back i'm sorry fellow us august august i wish this was permanent um so pretty this is like glossy mauve plum i'm running out of arms i'm sorry if i, I have a bruise on my elbow it is just it's like more plum than sadie it's darker it's not quite as dark it's not quite as purple as black cherry it's just like the most beautiful plummy nude but a little bit darker oh it's so good i don't even know if i'm describing it good enough it i'm shocked that there's any left to be honest and then the next one i know so many of my us girls have already liked but i want spellbound i knew this color would sell out the last time it came out. Highly pigmented, very beautiful, matte, deep, dark, yet if you put it on lightly, it's got that purple undertone. I'm still hopeful that they might bring this back permanently, kind of like they did with Renaissance. It was like the cool version of Renaissance. Renaissance was more red, this one's more purple. I mean, if you live in Canada, I would snag it. Like, not, no doubt in my mind, I would snag that. Um, it looks really scary in the tan, even, and it's super, so, so, super pigmented. But I'm telling you, you're gonna want that in fall and winter. It's so good. And then another favorite is Melody. I love this color. And this one's also only in Canada. And to me, is like one step off from taffy like a little bit darker can you tell darker it's more wearable definitely it's got i mean i don't even know it's definitely like a pink but it's such like a neutral pink it doesn't really pull cool or warm i don't feel like it's so like in the middle it's beautiful on everyone and then another favorite uh, glowy shade, this one's Homecoming. So this one's a little bit more sheer. I'm sorry for the weird arm swatches, guys. Um, a little bit more sheer. It looks, I, I used to actually top this over Melody <laughs> to give a glow. It's a little bit lighter, got a little bit of glow. Oh, it's so pretty as well. I wish I had time to like compare these all to all the permanent shades, but alas, there's way too many and I'm running out of time. Okay, it's time to go faster. So I went ahead, swatched all these bad boys. Let's go through them really quick so that we can save some time and then we'll do a quick eye look. La La Land. Glitter, pink, obviously. Eve, number five. It's like a deep, dark, just a little bit of shimmer. Burgundy, so pretty. Uh, Kiss, one of my favorites from the Advent. My gosh, if you didn't snag it before, here's your time. It is so pretty. Uh, it's got some gold shimmer. It reminds me of like Tawanda, but like more peach, a little bit more pigmented but you can use it in the same way with just like a wash. Literally one of my favorite shades. I can't believe it's coming back. Um, let's see, this one, Dollywood, I believe, which is more of like a coppery glitter. And then Shenandoah, which is the silver glitter. And then we've got Ginger, which is actually one of my all time favorite shades. Again, really scary looking, but like absolutely the best like lid shade to make your eyes pop if you have hazel eyes. It is gorgeous. Um, Rigoletto, which I feel like looks very different online. It's not so deep and dark and scary as you might think. It's kind of like a subtle form of fen in my opinion. Um, a little warm, a little cool, really, really fine shimmer. It's a great outer corner color for like a smoky eye, absolutely. 
Um, I can't believe the next two are on sale. They are like always in my compact. My Two of my favorite neutrals of all time. Stardust, which is like a shimmer taupe. If you're scared of eyeshadow, you don't know what colors, you wanna stay neutral, Stardust. Finn is my favorite for a bronzed smoky eye. I love it for liner, I love it for outer corner. I love just to use like a multitasker and kind of smudge it along the lash line. It gives great depth, but it also gives amazing shimmer. It's just, it's the perfect bronze color. It's so good. Crush, you guys know how much I love Crush. Like, holy grail color. Not super orange or anything. It doesn't, it looks barely peach on the lid, I promise. Like, look at it in the comp, like in the compact. It is so, I consider this like a neutral. Like it just catches light, but it's almost like a lid tone. I don't know, on me, I can't live without it. So yeah. Amethyst, one of my favorite purples. If you like purple, an amazing five shade, great for liner, so good. Duke, if you like blues, I mean, it's just a light blue shimmer. Um, Havana, again, favorite. Um, I'm gonna show you how to, I'm gonna show you how I would use Havana or Leo, my favorite way to use it. Uh, Snowbird, another one I'm surprised is in this because it is like one of the most neutral brown shimmers, such a great lid color. Um, and it also works really well, kind of like Fen, it's just not as deep as dark to get like a really natural daytime smoky eye, like that bronzy look I was saying. Uh, cranberry, one of my favorite fall lid shades, so pretty. Bayou, if you have blue eyes, you would love this shade, like it can make your blue eyes pop. Leo, again, I'll show you, it's kind of like Havana, I use this all the time. Denim is my favorite blue, I love using it as a liner. And then last but not least, Moscow, one of the most deceiving colors pictured online, that's Moscow. It is actually really pretty. Um, it's got like, it's just kind of like a little bit of a reddish shimmer. So pretty, again, on the lid, so good. All those eyeshadows, 40% off as well as two highlight shades. We got Nutmeg and Fiji. Fiji is a really great bronzer alternative. I always say if you're gonna use a highlight as a bronzer, know that it's not as sheer, it's gonna give a little bit more coverage. So sometimes it works really well if you like the bronzer first method. You wanna put that down as a base, kind of warm up, up your skin, kind of allow you to like use less makeup, but with a highlight in that way, it actually is gonna help you get more coverage. Whereas Bella doesn't give coverage in my opinion, it just can give the illusion of evening out your skin tone. It's not gonna give any additional coverage, whereas this one will. And then Nutmeg is right in between like Golden Hour Goddess and Papaya. So if you've tried Papaya as a color corrector and it's a little bit too dark or too red, I would recommend nutmeg. Darker spots and golden hour isn't working to correct them. Try nutmeg. Okay, friends, we did all the comparisons. We talked about all the sales stuff, but I ran out of time to show you guys this face. So we're gonna do that in part two. If you wanna see the get ready with me showing how to use these brushes and maybe some unexpected ways or how I would recommend using some of these sale brushes for your full face and creating a look with some of these fun colors, 40% off this week. If you're needing a match for the sale, just check out my pinned comment or the caption below the video and I'd be happy to help you out with my color match request. I do Demi, 3D and even eyeshadow color matches. If you want to see this look, be sure to stay tuned for part two. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Love you. Bye.